Craig here. I just thought I'd do a video on what I would call uh, high-speed machining. Obviously, if somebody has a VMC or something, like, might laugh at me, but um, for what I've been doing, I've usually been running around 30 inches a minute in steel. Um, anyways, I'll, I'll go over the details. Okay, so originally I had a fixture plate, and I drilled holes, and I actually bolted the thing down. So, uh, but in order to do them faster and not have to attend the machine as often, I've decided to go with these uh, expansion type clamps, these Uniforce clamps. Uh, but in doing so, it seems like the rigidity might not be as high. Uh, so when I try using the feeds and speeds that I was using before, it just wasn't working. There was uh, too much noise, uh, squeaking, chatter. So, so I kept on backing off. I, I was at like, uh, was it, 5,000 RPM at like 30 inches a minute. And that was doing okay. I watched some other video. Actually, there was a uh, a post by uh, John at NYCCNC on his Instagram where he was doing, I think it was 2700 RPM at uh, 8 inches a minute. And that looked like it was tuned up. I tried all those recipes on this, and those weren't working. So I did try to, decided to try something new. I decided to go with lower depth of cut. I basically backed off the depth of cut down to like, 10,000, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, 10,000 depth of cut, and my problem went away. The problem is it just took forever to do. So in the process, I just kept tweaking it and tweaking it, uh, and basically just making it going faster and faster and slightly deeper until I got to the point where I'm at now, which is about 120 inches a minute. Uh, I think it's like 16,000 depth of cut. But believe it or not, I've actually gotten the machining time down to half of what I originally had it before. Okay, this is at uh, 5,000 RPM, 120 inches a minute. I actually changed a few of the parameters in the uh, speed and the rapids and stuff, so I'm not really sure what to expect on this one, but I guess we'll find out. Uh, might help if I set my Z's on the pallet. It was still set off of the uh, the vise. Okay, this time it should work. But this is a four flute carbide end mill. It's actually a uh, three eighths uh, shank and a Tormach tool holder. Uh, this is actually an old uh, end mill. This is actually made a lot of parts already. So. Okay, well that's all done. Uh, it looks like I have a lot more blue chips in this code than from the last one. I was pretty much all uh, straw color, dark straw color. 
I think that was like 110 inches a minute at 15,000, 15,000 depth of cut. This one definitely gave me a little more blue, so I don't know. I'll have to look at the, uh, play with the recipe a little more. Um, then I'm going to change over to the 5 6 tenths m mil for the step that I make. Okay, well I just realized I didn't even have my air blast on it. I'd be, I'd be curious to see if that had a big uh, influence on the color of the chip. But. Okay, this is at 4500 RPM at 120 inches a minute. Okay, well you can tell there's no fooling around on the tool path there, it just kind of went, went from one straight into the other and just kept going around. So, um, looks like my chip color seems to be a little better, it's kind of mixed in with some of the other chips, but it looks like there's more straw color on here, so I'll have to try and tweak the, uh, the last one. Also, I'm still having a problem with the geometry, uh, I don't know, there's like a lip here sometimes, um, and this dimension here and it's usually just around the the the, uh, the turns here and I gotta grind this or buff it down I use Scotch-Brite it just burns up my Scotch-Brite wheel so but it will come off with Scotch-Brite yeah I mean this is uh, the the dimension from here to here is actually less than 5 sixteenths I put it at 5 sixteenths I had this problem because uh, this is a 5 sixteenths uh, bit so I Adjusted by, uh, I believe it was uh, five thou, yeah, five thou. So you'd think that would be enough to to cut off this edge. So I'm not sure. I haven't tried adjusting the uh, leaving the uh, leave stock on this surface right here. Uh, ax uh, radial, yeah. Um, axial is here. Radial is here. Um, and that did the same thing. I don't know if it's some issue with. Fusion 360 or, or what? I don't know. But anyways, so the next one is going to be the drill uh, in the 5 16 holes in here. I'm going to be using a 5 16 carbide. Uh, I got more torque if I use a carbide because I can run it at a higher RPM closer to my uh, spindle's uh, max power. But I'm still getting a rumbling when it enters in here. I don't know if anybody listening has any idea on this run but you'll hear it when I uh, when I run it so uh, one other thing I know some are probably thinking well you know you're running this low depth of shallow depth of cut you're just gonna burn out the tip of the uh, the end mill you know um, but you know do the rigidity on this um, seems like I have no other choice plus I'm actually going faster than before so if I can get these things done in half the time I was before that's gonna easily pay for more than pay for any extra costs. So I'll just use cheap end mills, I guess. Until I can, unless I can find a better recipe. Okay, this is at uh, 2700 RPM. Uh, I think it was three inches a minute. Um, 
This is a 5 16 carbide twist drill. Okay, I mean that makes quick work of four holes, you know, it's like a minute or so. Um, the uh, the chips seem to be a fairly good color. They're like a light straw color. So it's kind of hard to tell with all these other chips in here, but uh, there may have been a few. Yeah, there's a few. It's the big chips that are in here. There are a few blue ones right there, but... Alright, well, if you like this video, I'd appreciate the thumbs up. Uh, feel free to leave any comments. Oh. Oh, turn that off. Feel free to leave any uh, comments down below. And uh, I've got a big subscribe button over here if you like to subscribe. I've got some other videos down below if you like to see some other videos. And uh, that's it. Alright.